<laughs> Welcome to another episode of Sunday Club Online. I am thrilled that you are with me this week. Have you had a good week? How are you? I hope you're doing really well. It's time for Did You Know? Did you know that we are officially in Lent? Lent is what we call the period of time, the season, that signifies the 40 days that Jesus spent in the wilderness contemplating what was going to be his ministry, making sacrifices, and even being tempted by the devil himself. At our house, we make a point of adding a spiritual practice to our Lent, things that help us feel closer to God and our faith. At Color Block this past week, I committed to the kids that I would be doing about 15 to 20 minutes of meditation every day, making space to be still and listen and maybe hear what God has intended for me for that particular day. I'll be doing it all through Lent, and I'm really curious to hear what your added practices or what you'll be sacrificing this Lent. Leave it in the comment section below. And be sure to join us for our next color block on March 3rd at 3.15. I hope to see you there. When I was in school, I loved word problems. Not the kind of word problems like, you know, this person has six apples and that person has eight and they put them together. No, 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 no. The kind of word problems that I liked were ones that made you think a little bit. Ones like this. A man and his son were rock climbing on a dangerous mountain when they slipped and fell. The man didn't make it, but the boy was in need of help and was rushed to the hospital. When he got there, the surgeon looked down and said, I can't operate on this boy. He is my son. How could that be? Or another one is a man is walking down the street and stops into a pub. He asks the bartender for a glass of water. The bartender pulls out a gun, points it at the man. The man says, thank you, and leaves. What do you think happened there? I always like these problems because they challenge us, like I said, to think about situations in another way. This week, we're going to learn in the scriptures about someone who chose a different way to see Jesus. Let's check it out. This week's story of doing God's work in the world comes from the Gospel of Luke, chapter 19, verses 1 through 10. Listen for the word of God. Jesus came to the town of Jericho. He was only passing through, but people had heard he was coming, and a crowd gathered to get a look at him. Zacchaeus, who was a rich man and a tax collector, also wanted to see Jesus. He was short, though, and couldn't see over everyone else's heads, so he climbed a tree for a better view. When Jesus came near the tree, he looked up and saw Zacchaeus and invited him. Come down, I need to stay at your house today. Zacchaeus hurried down and welcomed Jesus. The rest of the crowd started grumbling. Doesn't he know who that is? They asked each other. He doesn't deserve to have Jesus come to his house. But Zacchaeus stood firm and said, Lord, look, I give half of my possessions to the poor. And if I've cheated anybody out of anything, I repay it four times over. And Jesus said, Salvation is here and now. Zacchaeus is a child of Abraham and Sarah, part of the promise of blessing. And this is the reason I'm here, to seek and set free those who need it. This is the word of the Lord. Did you have a favorite part of the story? How would you feel if Jesus called you out by name? Because of Zacchaeus' height, he decided to risk climbing a tree to see Jesus. Have you ever worked extra hard to get to something that you really wanted? The crowds were angry that Jesus went with Zacchaeus because they were working off incorrect thoughts they had about him. They assumed that he had cheated as a tax collector. Assuming is when you think you know about a person and then act in a certain way or treat someone a certain way based on those thoughts. 
Have you ever made an assumption about someone? Jesus proclaimed Zacchaeus' salvation that day by choosing him and his home for the evening. Jesus saved him from his reputation with the crowd. Remember our word problems? Getting to the right answers means we have to get rid of our assumptions. Let's take another look. A man and his son were rock climbing on a dangerous mountain when they slipped and fell. The man didn't make it, but the son was injured and rushed to a hospital. The surgeon looked down at the boy and said, I cannot operate on this boy. He is my son. How can this be? The answer is that the surgeon was the boy's mother. Did you assume that the surgeon might have been a man? And a man is walking down the street, sees a pub and enters. He asks the bartender for a glass of water. The bartender pulls out a gun and points it at the man. The man says, thank you, and leaves. What happened? Did you assume the bartender was going to hurt the man? Actually, he just used the gun to scare him and get rid of his hiccups. <laughs> Before we make assumptions about people, we're called as Christians to find the courage to ask questions and to communicate clearly as we can, to avoid misunderstandings, to see each other as Jesus sees us, with grace, and patience, and a whole lot of love. Will you pray with me? Dear God, thank you for the story of Zacchaeus. Thank you for trusting us with the challenge of being generous and letting go of our assumptions so we can work toward peace. Help us to ready ourselves daily to live our lives like you, respecting others and seeing them worthy of love, grace, and care. We ask for all of this in the name of your precious Son. And all God's children said, Amen. I hope you have a wonderful week. Remember to look close, listen carefully, and don't make assumptions about people. Hopefully they won't make assumptions about you. Go in peace because you're loved. Bye-bye.